Okay, so, uh, all that's in a failure, guys. So, so yeah. This is Ultra Spirit Hagakure. Now, this is a spinoff of, of Ultra Spirit Girls, but in itself, it's a spinoff of the franchise. Wow, a spinoff and a spinoff. As of now, I'm reacting to Danganronpa 3 still. So, so, let's do this shit. Ultra Despair Hagakure is gonna start, dude. Yeah, so Hero was pretty useless in Trigger Abbey Havoc. Let's see how he'll how, let's see how he'll do in this spinoff novel. Chapter one. Yashiro Hagakure. Several hours before the children's revolution begins. Oh, so this this takes place before Ultra Spare Girls, okay. Basically in between Dang Rapa 1 and Ultra Spare Girls, basically. Some future foundation. Let's be real. Why are we flying around in the helicopter right now? Which cool name what cool name like Future Foundation? We ought to have Stesnas or Roper Holes or something. Ah, I'm about to puke. And my comrade is telling me to hold it in, but I'm not air sick. It's just an act. I'm just pretending to be sick. It's not like I'm an asshole or something. I don't want to put on this act like that. After all, I have a depth of over 8 million aluminum over my head. Then you should have never sold any of those scams, bruh. Like I told you in the first game, you should have never sold those fucking scams, bruh. Pay that back. I gotta keep up with this little act on our way to Toa City. Under the fair blue sky. The helicopter and 20 of us future, future shit, 20 of us future foundation guys arrive at the heliport on the rooftop. I gotta get off. I push my way through the, my comrades and leap out of the chopper at full speed. I run I run down the energy I mean the emergency staircase. Get outside and finally take a little breather. Mission accomplished for now. All I gotta do is all I gotta do now is scout this town for some valuables and slip them into my pockets. You can earn big bucks fencing Toa City Tech. They're like the cutting edge technology now or whatever. So all the nerds want it bad. So that's why I came with this plan to borrow quote unquote some Toa Group machinery. But in reality, he's gonna steal his shit. In reality, hand it off to a pawn shop and make myself some cash. That's what an act was for. Back at the helicopter, so I could run off alone. But even I feel guilty swiping something from this building where the chopper landed. Now let's see. I gotta find some valuables. I scope it out. But the place I'm standing is smack dab in the middle of the business dis district. The only thing I can see are modern looking buildings towering me, towering over me, nothing to steal. A wise man keeps some of his talents in reserve, as they say. I feel like I said that wrong, but whatever. It's not like anyone is listening. This is the weekend in the business district. So there's no sign of anyone around. Just winging it now, I stroll through the business di district to try to find some goods. Uh, I, I, as I slip into the alley, I suddenly find something that catches my eye. It's shaped like a payphone. What the hell is this? A glass rectangular thing? Nothing inside. My heart or something. Ah, uh, can't be. I heard about this in some kind of pamphlet. Something like 80% of shit 
on street corners in Toy City are mechanical opponents. This has got to be some kind of high-tech machinery, probably worth big bucks. I, ch I choose you, my first catch. I'll just jack or er, borrow this and use it as a down payment for my, on my debt. Well, actually, this thing is the size of a payphone. I don't think I'll fit in my pocket. But I can't just give up. Uh, try to pick up the machine like I'm trying to give it a piggyback ride. A warning sound rings out like a siren of a police car. The noise stabs my ears harshly as if trying to alert me of danger. Oh wait, this isn't a danger alarm. This is a death prevention buzzer. They think I'm a burglar. Well, it, it was your idea to steal it, bro. No, it's not like that. I just wanted to borrow it for a bit for some money, man. That's the moment I realized I'm explaining myself to nobody. Well, on the other side of the street, about 65 feet ahead, I see Monokuma. Monokuma's red eye lights up and he sprints at me. Ugh. What the fuck? He, does he think I'm a thief or something? Is he here to lock me up? Or maybe he's trying to start up the second round of the, of the school killing incident. No way, both are bullshit. I mean, right. Monokuma can't really be running at me right now in the first place. This has gotta be some kind of trick, like an illusion or something. I get it. If it's a trick, not nothing I can do but get by I guess. I close my eyes, clear my head, and open them one more time and confirm my suspicions. Huh? The view didn't change in one bit. Yeah, it's real bro. My comment and his red blinking eye are still charging at me. Run away, bro! Like, come on! I come across the road in, into the alley, <sighs> and it's just a few feet from my face. Why does it have to be Makoma flying his sharp claws out, out from his hands? Huh? That kind of makes it look like he's trying to kill me. It's not possible. Impossible. I gotta get out of this possibility, man. But my worst memory crossed my mind, and my body freezes up. Cold sweat drips from my, my entire body. Can, I can feel the blood leave my face. My coat is coming closer, but my body won't move. Hey, wait. I'm sure we can talk this out. My coat doesn't say anything back. He's coming. He's still coming at me, and fast. If I don't run, I'm gonna die. Run, bitch, run! Like, I tried to do Shorty's voice, but I couldn't. No, even if I run, he's already close. So much distance. Now, right before my eyes, my cross claws shine like the devil, sharp to the edge. He about to whoop your ass, bro. I'm a dead man now. And as I feel despair set in, I let out a gasp. The atmosphere vibrates. I feel like my jaw, I feel my jaw tremble and every bit of, of stubble. I feel my soul is ruptured. The sound of an explosion dungeons out. Presently, I own my open my eyes. Oh shit, huh? Wreckage on my corner is scattered around my feet. Like, exploded from the inside out. Hmm. Truly a painful sight to behold. Uh, why did it self destruct? No, but really, why? Idiot. What are you doing? It's not safe here. I hear a voice from behind me and quickly turn around. A high school girl in a uniform and a blazer is standing 
in front of me. Chest, not hair, and a bob, big round eyes, super cute. For minus points for having the, the fashionista thick makeup look. Wait a minute, what's that? In this girl's hand is a hacking gun made by the Future Foundation. Huh? Is this high schooler also from Future Foundation? Nah, it couldn't be. I never seen her before. Then how did she get that gun? Paying my confused expression, no mind. She grabs my hand and pulls skirt fluttering. The white skin that peeks out just above the navy blue socks. Oh wait a minute. There are more pressing matters at hand here. Who the hell are you? Leave the intros for later. This place is dangerous. And without another word, I start running with this girl leading the way. Come on, they won't find us here. Girl and I stop at a vacant lot just through the narrow alleyway. My car shouldn't be able to fit through the narrow space. She's right. The alley isn't wide. It would would be impossible for my to get through there. But more importantly, who the hell is this chick? Chest, not colored, bob hair, thick makeup. Looks like she's the type to have a kid at 21. But surprisingly, she isn't out of breath at all. Even though we've been running for 20 minutes. And her skill with the gun blasting Amon coming apart like that, she's a special one. Well, in any case, I'm saved. If she didn't show up, I would have died about 10 times already. I mean, as we were running here, I saw w more than 30 Monkons. It seems like a production model designed for combat, not like the one at the school. Still, it's untelling. I saw bodies. I saw bodies stacked up in the streets. They were all slashed. <sighs> Why the fuck I keep yawning, bro? They were all slashed pieces. I wanted to throw up so many times seeing them like that. And not just that. Not only my cause, what's with these ki kids? There's at, at least one kid running around for three my for every three my cause. The kids look weird. They were all wearing the same uniform and they all have a my helmet on. I'm sure you have questions for me, but now we should introduce ourselves. Oh yeah, right, totally. True, she did save me and all, but until I find out more about this girl, I can't be so quick to trust her. Now, let's start with me. Name's Yasuhiro Hagakure. I'm a sexy 20-something guy. Alright. Thank God there's some voice acting in this game. <laughs> Not in this game, in this novel, bro. Thank God there's some voice acting. Because in Thank God, but if, so far, I, I have not heard anybody have a voice actor and if bruh well they all the characters obviously do have voice actors in the game but for some reason not an if I never understood why it would be great to have at least some some voice acting in it not all of it but some huh 20 something how old are you well your ass is stupid as hell, that's what I'm gonna say. That's why you got held back a shit ton of times, bro. I was being ambitious on purpose. Don't want to ruin the main story's timeline. Whatever that means. So what a guy like you doing in a place like this? When I say you, you look like you were trying to lift a payphone. Those have their reasons. Price clean brightly. So you weren't trying to steal. No way, a member of a future foundation would never do something so fiendish. Except he was trying to steal, bruh. <laughs> if I were trying something like that, I'd be cursed by the heavens for eternal eternity. 
There's no way in hell in the heavens would curse people. Wait, what? What did I? What did you say? I get cursed by the heavens. Now before that, um, I'm in future future nation. That? Were you being serious? You're actually with them. Why is she so surprised? Oh wait, I get it. She must be some kind of fangirl. She must admire us for our efforts and to heroically fight this the despair. If that's the case, I try to keep it cool. And answer. Sure. Sure am. I'm Yasuhiro Hagakure. Future, future, future Foundation's ultimate weapon. I'm here on official Future Foundation business. Not to steal valuables or anything. Bam. Nailed it. After that, this high school girl is going to be my lifelong fan. I give the girl a flirty glimpse to show off. But what's this? The girl just stares with a cold expression, not saying a word. Or a look, I feel like there's hatred there. Could it be? Did she figure out I was actually here to steal stuff? Is she disgusted by my filthy lie? Caught red-handed as, as a Future Foundation member and thief. As I was standing there, freaking out, the girl opens her mouth and speaks, still staring. Whack. Seriously? Wow, whack. That old 90s slang is pretty lame. I say before I can stop, before I can stop myself. I mean, in my defense, that's been like 10 years since anyone has used that word non-ironically. Totally dead language when I think for like five years ago. What did whack you mean? It was something like bad or awful, right? So this is the kind of girl who can use the word whack, word whack, word whack in all seriousness, huh? All right. As I'm thinking about this, the girl locks her eyes on me, onto me. They start filling with tears. Tears lined her long eyelashes. The droplets looked like. They would fall off with just one more blink. Huh? What? Why is she gonna cry? Sorry, I didn't mean it. Whack isn't such a lame word. This girl's physical skills are no joke. I'm not good. I'm not in the mood to get a roundhouse kick to the face. Like in some romance anime, so I apologize. I lower my head, blowing a full 90, blowing a few, a full 90 degrees. I'm terribly sorry, but she just shakes her head. No, it's not that. Then why are you about to cry? Like, like what? I saw it coming. After a few seconds of silence, the high schooler cries as loud as she can. <laughs> okay, what the hell is going on here? I can't just leave this girl alone and not take her back to the helicopter with me. Besides, with Monkoa stalking the people, I can't make it back by myself. I just waited, staying up straight now for the girl to stop crying. After a solid 10 minutes, the girl calmed down, sniffling. I'm sorry, I'm alright right now. Just what in the world is going on inside you, girl? I kind of want to just straighten up her, ask her, but I don't want to step on a landmine again. I hold my thoughts back. Anyway, you still haven't told me your name. Who are you? If you save me from the Monokuma, I know you can't be a bad guy. Like a brawling just a second ago was asked. She answers as if nothing happened. Can, ca, canon, ca, canon, na, Nakajima. Or Canon Nakajima. Name means something like sound of flowers, fiends, island. I'm an Anna Anna Jeremy. Wait, Canon Nakajima. Wait, I think I heard that name before. In uh, I, what was it? I think in one of the uh fucking uh hit list things. I heard of it. 
which by the way, what which I did before, and by the way, I'm gonna react to the full, to all of the hit list shit in a future video, y'all guys. So yeah, so be ready for that. Okay, and Anger, Anna Jermaine, Anna Jermaine, no, 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 Anna Jermaine, it's Pig Lad, I'm a manager, you lost me, but more importantly, a manager, what would a high school girl, what a child like that be doing in a place like this? Why am I here? I wish I knew myself. So yeah. And I just realized that something. That Cannon herself is the cousin of... I know I knew, I know I knew this already when I did the hit list of her being related to Leon. And I found, I found that the facts that they're both cousins. So yeah. I've been knew that she was related to Leon after reading the description, but but then I later found out that they're both cousins. So yeah. Let's she lets out a sigh and say something that makes me think she's joking. She tells me she was in prison in some apartment around here for over a year and a half. Then the door gets busted. In. And just when she thinks she's safe, it walks in Monokuma. Without permission, Monokuma tries to kill her. Green Peace Foundation happened to be there at the same time, so they took care of the bear for her. And even though Peace Foundation was supposed to help her escape, somehow the Monokuma managed to split them up and she got separated. She got smiled by Monokuma's and some kids kidnapped and then given some kind of test. When she passed it, they put some wristband on her and then released her into the city. It seems the children are using the Monokuma's to try to build some kind of quote unquote paradise just for them. And now here we are. That's the, that's the gist of it because she was in prison here. I assumed that she must have been a relative of someone from my old school. Yes, she was. She was related to Leon, bruh. You know, that, that dude that killed Sayaka out of self-defense? So, yeah. Me, she's probably a captive, but other than that, I don't know anything else. Things like children causing terrorism, a revolution, if it's a joke, it's not funny. It's not a fucking joke, bro. You're kidding me, right? Do I look like I'm jerking you around? Cannon looks at me with unwavering eyes. The way she looks, she gives off a very 90s out of place vibe, but I don't see anything that makes me think she's not that serious. Then how did you get that hacking gun? I borrowed it from a future, from, from a future foundation agent who was killed. Killed? You can't be serious. I'm not kidding, I told you. I got separated from the others when the Monokuma attacked. I didn't know they got killed. Well, obviously I, I was trying to have some tact and didn't mention it. The future foundation agents who went into that building, Yakya was with them. I wonder if she's safe. I mean, I wonder if he's safe. Sorry about that, yeah, guys. And hey, you're also from future, from future foundation, right? Why weren't you with the others? Oh, I am in a reserve squad. A reserve squad. It's like a bonus squad that was formed to go in if something happens to the main force. The mission was so small, just responding to a tip that our team was pretty relaxed about it. But I guess it wasn't so simple. Could it be 
Does this have something to do with that incident? AKA the tragedy, yeah, guys. But isn't that all in the past by now? What in the hell is going on? Ask Cannon. But she quickly tells me she she knows nothing. Man, I want to go home. I just want to put my hands up and forget everything and go watch some shows about oh oh. Oh, Bards. But now's not the time to think st stuff like that. For now, let's head back to the building where our helicopter is waiting. I may ha have just been saved by some random high school girl, but I'm still future, future, future. Oh my god. Bit of a tongue twister. Ah, there you go. But I'm still future, future, mother, motherfucker, bro. <laughs> My fucking stuttering, bro. Like, I swear, bro. <laughs> like, my stuttering, like, I do apologize for any videos that involves my stuttering. Like, it's just hard for me to, like, say shit without stuttering, bro. Or certain shit, bro. I'm still future foundation 14th branch. Yasuhiro Hagakure. I can't be the kind of relief side character forever. For real, bro. You was fucking comic relief in the first game. And I did not like you because of the whole ghost thing. Like, the whole ghost thing really pissed me off, Hero, bro. Let's see if you can redeem yourself in this side story, bro. Canon Nakajima. I love light novels. Not the ones that have like an interesting perspective or deep plot. I like the ones where the main character gets romantically involved with his sister, harem stuff. But it's not like I'm super nerdy about it or anything. Like a heroine, her, heroine from one of those novels. I might not look like it, but I know a lot about anime and manga and stuff. Aren't I cute? Well, it's not like that either. Oh, it's, this is from, coming from Canon's point of view now. I think I, I think I just like to see the part of myself that the heroines, the heroines that show up in light novels. I admire the worldview that even close relatives cannot tie a knot as long as they as there's love. Close relatives. Like I like Big Brother Leon. Even though they're even though you got cousins in real life, bro. This is kinda like the this is kinda like the you and Na Nanako Fond, fond that from Persona 4 in the fact that they think that they're siblings but in reality they're cousins so yeah I love Big Brother Leon everything I do is for the sake of Big Brother Leon well I call him Big Brother but it's not like he and I actually are actually siblings we're just cousins see I told you yeah yeah they're cousins my dad is is the younger brother of Leon's dad. So it's that kind of relationship. So Leon doesn't really see me as a woman. How can I put this? He always call me you always call me big brother. And to me, you're just my little sister. So we can't have that kind of relationship. But we can. As long as there's love, it doesn't matter. It's no no law against it either. That is true, bro. Like I said, it's not like that. Even if it's okay law-wise, it's not gonna happen. Like, if you kill a dog, the law says that property is damaged, but the dog's more than a property. Well, what am I trying to say is that the law isn't always right, you know, but I mean, hell, right now, my plan is to get a band together and get lots of groupies so I can't can't. No matter how many times I try to share 
my love, he just dodges me and leaves me hanging. Reality isn't anything like not like light novels. But unfortunately, Leon was a realistic man, so I tried my best to keep it real. One summer, when I was in the sixth grade, Leon in the eighth grade at the time, came over to my place, went on go and picked up one of my magazines. He saw this model and couldn't stop talking about how cute she was. The girl he was talking about was a popular supermodel, wearing, wearing heavy makeup and jewelry, jewelry, and I just felt despair. At the time, it was a fashion disaster, the furthest possible thing from a model like that. But if that's the kind of girl Big Brother like, Leon likes, I have no choice. Literally that night, I used my allowance to buy one trendy outfit and makeup online. Two days later, I tried on the outfit and learned how to buy makeup. Hmm. The girl in the mirror looks super hot. I was totally killing it. Maybe with a little more practice, I can totally nail the look Leon likes. Overflowing with confidence, I went over to Leon's place to show off the new me. But when he saw me, his eyes went wide. Huh? What the hell is this? What did you do to yourself? What do you mean? I'm a model. See? Pretty hard. Pretty hard. What? Don't all those fashionistas talk like this? No, I don't think so. Okay, well, forget about the lingo then. You like this, right? Girls with this kind of look? No, it's not that look in particular. I like all the cute girls. They can pull off any look. What the hell? He makes it sound like I'm not cute at all. Well, even though I don't look it, I'm super popular. Don't be so whack. Okay, this look just doesn't suit you at all. And no one says whack anymore. Wow. Yeah, I really don't say whack anymore. Like, what the fuck? You, you're the one to talk. Your head is shaved, even though you're in high school. Well, come on, that wasn't my decision. Oh yeah, because the fucking baseball team actually make, they made him shave, they made him shave his head for like, because of quote unquote tradition, basically. Like, even though Leon did not want to play baseball in the first place, bro. Being dead serious, too. So, Operation Makeover didn't go exactly as planned. No, it wasn't just Makeover. I was planning to, on trying, on, on tying a knot with Leon, but that totally failed. But even so, I kept loving him. I love, love, love Big Brother Leon so much. I don't know why I fell for him, but I can't list a hundred million things I like about him. For example, when he was playing base, when he's playing a baseball game, fourth in the lineup, the starting pitcher, it's like he's the hero in a manga. Two outs, bases loaded, bottom of the ninth. Even though the season's over, if he strikes out, everyone is totally confident with Leon's batting. And just like everyone expected, Leon hits a grand slam trying around the bases like, the, like it was nothing. He was so cool, I thought I was gonna faint. And that's just one thing. I can still come up with another 99,999,999 things I like about Leon. Maybe you think I'm just exaggerating, but honestly, I don't even think I'm doing him justice. So I tried to confess my love again. Well, anyway, big brother, I love you. Uh, love, love, love you. Today and always. How many times do I have to tell you before you understand? I, I just don't see you in that way. No, look at me. 
that way. Let's get married. Impossible. I don't want to. Yes, you. Yes, you do. You just don't know it yet. I know you really do want to marry me. Okay, seriously, stop. How many times do I have to, to reject you until you get it? Huh? Ugh. Every time Leon rejected me, I cried like a little baby. But the cycle of confession and rejection continued until it became kind of a routine. It's, an, it's not impossible. We're meant to be together. You don't see when well, we're cousins. I'm, I'm sorry, no. When I cried, Leon would pat my head, but I could tell tell he's kind of kind of thought I was being annoying. It looked so rough, but the hand that patted my head was always so so, so super soft and warm. Every time he patted my head, I just liked him even more. Leon and I are two years apart. I first confessed to him when I was six, now, and now at 15, I've confessed to him a total of, of 3,909 times, bro. 3,909 flights, 3,909 TKOs. My love did not come true. Alright, so, uh, so yeah, that was it. That's pretty much it for chapter one, yeah, guys. Next episode, we're gonna do chapter two. So, yeah. I'll see you guys next time. Barbination TV, sign off.